having previously talked about aligning the work holding and the dividing head, I'm now going to talk about centering the cutter so that it's in line with the vertical centre of the work holding and dividing head. The cutter I'm using in this instance is a 60 degree ratchet cutter, which is not um, a symmetrical cutter. Very like this one, struggling to pick out. It's a 60 degree ratchet wheel cutter, as I said, with a rear flat flank, which is here disposed at the rear. And that's on this one going to be the line of what I'm trying to achieve on centre. But I'm going to talk a little bit about more normal horological cutters, wheel cutters, because they are symmetrical cutters. So this sort of tooth form, where you can see that, so it's equally disposed about that centre. If you're really lucky, the flanks of the cutter are also equally disposed and that can become part of the centering process. But it's not true for all cutters. Um, certainly some makes aren't symmetrical and there are bespoke cutters out there um, or you can make your own as well. And you cannot rely on them being symmetrical in my view. Um, which is a shame, and I'm going to talk about some of the ways that you can centre, some of which would be frankly a lot easier if you really could rely on that symmetrical aspect. There are a number of options for centering cutters. I've got a centre in there, but you could replace that, if you had a smaller one of these that fitted this machine, with a centering microscope. This one's rather Morse taper too, and physically just too big, even if I took off this rear plate and made a new W12 attachment. It's just physically too awkward and too large to be used on this machine, because you can see this would then clash with the underarm support. They're a joy to use. This is a really nice Swiss one. And one of the advantages of this one is that the reticle is made up in a way that you have a grid on it, but the centre vertical and horizontal lines are actually paired lines a very small distance apart. So you can then accurate, really accurately by eye, bring the flank of a cutter into that centre. Your eye's really good at sort of picking things like that out. So rather than trying to align with a line, you're aligning with a tiny gap. And frankly, it just seems a much easier way of doing it. Sadly, I don't have one that fits this. There are a number of options. For instance, you can make a sort of flip over tool to fit in there that you would bring up against the flank of the cutter, then flick it over and well, drag out a, the idea. You basically use a micrometer head, these nice little Swiss ones. So you would have that in a flip over tool, rotate the tool over and take another measurements, halve it and so on. The problem is that these really nice ones are just physically, again, too big. You're just going to be hitting things all the time. Even if you go to the smallest, that I, well, that I possessed anyway, the nice little Shardlow one, it's still really a bit on the large side for this sort of job. So I frankly discounted that as a way of working. The next option is to do it all by eye which may sound a little bit accurate, inaccurate. And actually, no, you don't have to do it all by eye because you could use a dial test indicator or a dial gauge, again, on a flip over tool. But then you'd be trying to read it upside down. Uh, I can't speak for other people, but I know that if I tried working like that, I would introduce errors because I'd make mistakes. And it just seems a little bit too cumbersome. And doing it by eye, I have to say, I found very accurate. Um, and I'm nothing special, so if I can do it, I'm sure somebody else can, or anybody else can, frankly. The smaller the workpiece is, the larger percentage of that job your error becomes. So my view is, if you can make it work on really small pinions, now I'm not talking about watch ones, because I don't do such small work, but I've certainly made pinions for little 18th century singing bird to Batier, um, both for the sort of rolling the side to side movement of the head on them and the whole object is only about that big so the the head of the bird is a fraction of my small fingernail so the pinion inside that is pretty small and even the pinions inside the little fusy movements inside the the main box are pretty small and 
Pinion making is very unforgiving of errors. If you're not on the centre line, you can just look down the end of the pinion and the leaves or teeth in sort of gear terms. You can quickly see if they're not on centre because they'll lean and, and the thing just will not work properly and it looks awful. You know it's going to be no good. So my view is if you can do it by eye accurately enough for small work like that, then as you bring the scale up, your error is going to be no larger, but the overall accuracy in effect becomes better. Um, and the way that you do it is giving yourself as much advantage as possible by using magnification, so an eyeglass. Um, anybody who's doing this sort of work probably quite quickly amasses a variety of them. Um, slightly confusingly, my ones, some of them are marked up in focal length, so a three inch focal length gives less magnification than a two inch focal length. But then I have others that are marked up by magnification. There's a double lens one and that gives 12 times magnification. And to be honest, that's my favourite tool for this sort of work because the more magnification, the better. 12 times gives you pretty accurate results in my view. Um, and again, there's various ways you can do this. Um, certainly sort of common options that I can think of would be to make up, um, in effect, a female centre. So this is a male centre, but rather than using a real female centre, make up your own. Use a spotting drill into the end of it so you have a, an inverse cone and then flat off top and bottom to expose in effect a V that the light will then shine through from above or below as needed and I tend with all of these sort of visual guides make my life easy as possible and get a bit of white or pale card underneath preferably not too reflective and then as you look down on it you've got a much clearer picture of what's going on it's probably common sense and blindingly obvious but I'll just mention it for anybody who hasn't done this before. Um, but you need to get your eye on the centre line of the cutter, or in this case, aligning with the rear face. When you're trying to look at the centre line, um, excuse me if I'm sort of stating the obvious, you need to get your eye directly above the centre of the tooth form. And if the cutter is truly symmetrical with regard to the flanks about that, then just look at it from above until both flanks disappear from your view. So you just shuffle backwards and forwards until you know you're genuinely vertically above it. If the cutter's not symmetrical, then you'll just have to look down the edges of the actual tooth profile. When it comes to a ratchet wheel cutter, then you've got a, a flat, well, it's slightly relieved, but in effect a flat face at the back. So you will see that disappear and depending where the other teeth are disposed you can see evidence of whether they're truly in line or not. Um, again another form of wheel cutter is this one's a musical box worm wheel cutter. Again you've got a effectively flat rear flank and a sort of slight curve over the top and then an angled flank and again, you quite quickly get the, the idea of how to make bits disappear so you know you're on the centre line. Rather than making up a special tool, um, because in this instance I'm going against a flat surface at the back, for a, a symmetrical tooth form, that V pattern does work quite well. Your, your eye's very good at deciding when something's in the centre of something else have heard what the accuracy is and I'll probably make a fool of myself if I quote it because I can't remember accurately but it is surprisingly accurate. Um, in this case as I say I'm going against the flat flank so I've just used the conventional centre and I will look from above and what I'll be doing is bringing the head of the machine backwards and forwards until I'm on the centre line and because in this instance I'm not going to be cutting with the cutter actually on the centre line and I'll explain all that later on in probably another video or another segment of this video I've got to then bring the cutter forward to make the actual cut so that precludes me from another option which is to put into the collet um, 
a an accurate diameter say um a gauge or just turn up a diameter to a specific amount and just back the cutter against it and then once you know that you're just touching that so the old favorite of the cigarette paper which i know some people sort of sneer at but if you measure your cigarette paper and this instance the ones i use are one thousandths of an inch then again you can get pretty reliable repeatable results so i'm quite a fan of doing it that way um i say just back it against a known diameter and then just go to the radius so half the diameter and you will be on the center line and if you want to take account of the thousandths of an inch which is probably best to do then do so and you're going to find pretty accurate results that way in this instance it's a flat back and it's just a matter of bringing that flat back so it's genuine in, in, in line with the tip of the center i'm going to lock the head at that point because i want to get a height against the work the actual work piece um, I won't fumble about doing a changeover now. I'll do that as a separate segment. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about cutter centering because to some people it's just blindingly obvious or old hat. But to others, hopefully there's something in this that you can gain of use for your work. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. I'm rather painfully aware that my description of um, centering the rear of the cutter may have been a bit... Um, unclear shall we say what i've tried to do here is mimic with the uh, camera in my mobile phone what's going on as you move your head to the rear of the machine so the flat side of the cutter nearest to the uh, center in the film here i mean obviously you can see this is all uh, magnified up because this is a very small cutter and a very small center but this is really trying to mimic what you see through an eyeglass so if your head is too far to the rear of the machine and so your eye line is actually behind the center line then if i can just point at it here you can see the rear face of the cutter appearing in your vision so getting a ever increasing view of the back of the teeth so that shows that you're too far back as you draw your head to the front of the machine you can see those teeth receding away getting close to the right point they're just disappearing and then as you go too far you can see this line creeping out and over the far side it's more visible i think realistically i've probably not got the camera set up at the perfect angle so i'm trying not to worry too much about what you see here because realistically you're going to be focused over the the portion nearest the center and that's where you've got to concentrate your vision but those indications tell you really where you are with your eye line over or not over the center line of the, the axis of this here, which is the crucial bit, because obviously the cutter at this stage has still got to be adjusted. But if you're somewhere close, then you can use the cutter to help you see whether you're over the center or not. And you just refine that as you, uh, you work away at getting the cutter in the right place. So essentially take it that we're now directly overhead. You're then just going to draw the work out of the machine forwards and backwards so that the rear of the cutter coming to a crest just here, if I can point at it, is in line with the center of your center. Now, obviously, under magnification, you can see my center's got a slight flat spot on the end, but even so, you see, as I creep forward, you can eye that up pretty accurately. Now, I will go away afterwards and really make sure I'm actually happy. But to me, that looks close or very close. And really, this is the process. With a, a conventional tooth profile, you would be lining up to so that the center of that profile is in line with the center. Um, and as I said, you can use a V rather than a center in order to help you with that process. But for a 60 degree cutter like this, where you have one flat face, this I find, frankly, is as good a way of centering it as any. Um, I will do this more accurately, lock the head off, and then actually I need to find the, uh, the correct height for the cutter in relation to the job. 
because for various reasons, which I'll explain later, I'm actually going to do the cut with the cutter traversed forward some seven millimetres. Um, and that's to compensate for the 60 degree angle, which I don't actually want to replicate in the teeth. Well, I want 60 degrees between the flanks of the teeth, but I want them to be equally disposed about a centre line rather than angled over as this would do as it's if it was cutting on the centre line. 